Hi guys, I hope you're well. I want to do something and I want to use my family as an example. And this is just to show you um, the kind of legalities that the devil will use against you. And you will see a lot of quarrels in your family. And uh, sorry. So you will see a lot of quarrels in your family and you don't understand why. And uh, it's all intention, yeah, it's all done in good faith. Um, this will be things like the naming of your children, and this will bring them into a lot of uh, issues uh, in their lives that they won't know why. Now, a lot of people in families will keep, uh, will notice at some point that there's a setup, yeah, there's a problem a particular child is going through. And they will try and investigate that. Uh, sometimes they will try and give a uh, sacrifice to a piece. They will think that it's the person, uh, you know, like the person they are named after that could be angry in their sleep, as in in their death, that could be angry and so affecting this child with the with a curse, yeah, or something. And so they will keep investigating: uh, is there a curse in this family? Was this child cursed? Or something like that so I'm going to give you uh, using my family uh, as an example I'm going to give you um, an example right and I will show you uh, a battle that has been going on in our family for very long yeah and it's so twisted you wouldn't understand how it comes into play I'm just going to make an attempt and the Holy Spirit will do the rest okay so in the third uh, part of this altars that we are fighting I showed that the my great grandpa is called Njoroge, okay? Njoroge. The problem is writing is never so fast. Njoroge married Nduta, okay? Um, now, they bore a son called Njoguna, okay? Njoguna. And Njoguna married somebody called Njoki my grandma okay uh, i wish i didn't take that much space i hope you can see everything that i'm doing so njuguna um njuguna and joki uh made the, ma the my mother okay so from here i will show not a, 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 a male name because uh, like i said my mom chose not to be married so Mary, let, let's call her Wanjiko. Wanjiko chose not to be married, okay? Wanjiko, so she, she kind of stands alone, but from her, we see Njoki, who is my grandma, okay? So Njoki is the firstborn, and Duta, okay? So uh, I will attempt to. I will attempt to explain something here uh, where these names appear. So Nduta is named after my mother's sister who is called Nduta, but in actuality it is this name repeating, okay, Nduta. So without knowing it and without uh, parents knowing it, this is just uh, tradition, okay, I will be named Nduta. You're ready to leave? To yeah. leave? Okay. Hi guys, I had to go drop my sign. But yeah, so you see that flow, Njoroge marries Nduta. Nduta, the birth in Jogona, who marries Njoki. Uh, what oh, am I saying, Maris? And they get Wanjiko, who, ma, who gets Njoki and Nduta, okay? Now Njoki, gets Wanjiko okay plus uh, let's call this one Joy okay but she's a girl okay so uh, this girl because of marriage she doesn't get a name from our family she, she would have been called in Duta okay but uh, she's called somebody else okay so uh, as a way to help you understand, I will I will say one one short thing, okay? I will say one I will say one thing about Joy. Joy will not be fighting 
our our altars okay this the altars from this family okay all right because she entered another family is operating under a different name now nduta right nduta gets married okay to peter all right gets the firstborn as ameru firstborn first <laughs> m meru second second juguna okay who we call something different because the father said so we call him karega okay karega it means to refuse okay third born is meru okay so has nothing to do with our uh, family altars has something but can be redeemed okay this is what sets this nduta into motion okay this is what awakens me brings me into a, a battle now as i'm fighting for this one because something happened yeah I, I i had a dream where i was being forced to sign a contract actually not forced being tricked into signing a contract so that this one will go away the karega okay and i wake up crying and fighting and goes immediately into a fast okay not the same day i had to seek help to understand what that is about okay but just before that happened my mother had said my mother when jiko had said that she had a dream where this boy my second born is coming into a washroom a bathroom yeah and the dad notices him going into that bathroom he's so dirty the dad rushes in to clean him okay so it was just the dad uh, and the boy and my mom could see okay that dream did not uh, make sense to me because it was not my own battle i wanted to go in and battle and god would tell me now chill out get, get out of the fast okay so your son is covered up to that point okay now any other issues that would need prayer fasting and all of that he will intimate okay he will tell me when all right but now this is the same boy that i had been fighting with and asking why 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 so i will tell you something about the wrangles that come from this family and why this nduta this nduta would fight with her son okay now um let's 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 say i'm not a good artist but let's say this is nduta okay um okay a uh, pretty girl all right let's say that is the original nduta okay and on one of her shoulder there is a familiar spirit okay this familiar spirit are the ones that are let's assume those are horns this familiar spirit are the ones who come whisper things to you throughout the lineage okay now this woman was forever in mourning because she lost her son almost at birth she she almost lost him at birth but he was restored okay because this man her husband fought for him, for for him okay but now uh she was always in mourning always sad about this thing about losing her son during uh emergency the state of emergency the guy went and never came back at least for others they knew these people died in that uh, place for her she didn't know where her son went okay but there's a familiar spirit here yeah, that tell her tells her you must demand for your son so this will keep happening throughout the ages okay and so whenever it comes that there's a relationship where another nduta brings forth and juguna the same familiar spirits through the legality of names okay the legality of names will keep demanding where is my son okay i mean why did you let me go mom 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 why did you let me go okay you know like why did you pray for me or something like that now this woman may have survived by the sheer power of hope okay so every time that she thought her son was alive she she was hopeful okay and maybe this hope uh let's say it's an angel okay <laughs> so that's the face of an angel today okay and a circle indicating her the presence of an angel okay that's uh thing 
Okay, maybe God was comforting her throughout the years that do not worry, I will restore you. And perhaps she would say things like, how will you restore me, God? How? You know, show me how. And, you know, God would say through the spirit that hover, hovers over this murkiness, okay, over this darkness, over this depth, maybe God would say something like, I will restore you through the ages, okay? And so before she died, of course, she saw her, her first namesake, yeah, Nduta from Joki, okay? So with Wanjiko were born, Nduta, okay, they should be here. They were the first. Nduta, okay? This Nduta came into play, okay? Yeah, so this Nduta also brought forth Anjuguna, okay? Because she had two sons. One was named after the husband's family, and then Juguna came about, yeah? So restoration. So maybe the familiar spirits, are whenever, you know, they, 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 they are crying and, you know, you know, asking for bloodshed against any, any of the, you know, every, any person who participated, the spirit of the Lord is just bringing this calm, like there were other Jugunas. Now, if anything happens to these Jugunas, or if there is any battle between the Njugunas and the Ndutas, yeah, uh, there's still also some calmness, yeah, like there's uh, that ability to like talk to the child, like, uh, don't worry, you know, uh, you'll be restored, or, you know, even if it hurts, like what is happening to this Njuguna hurts, this Nduta will understand as a mother and soothe the child, okay? Now, I'll tell you what, uh, what trickery now happens in the family, yeah? So, Wanjiko bears and Uta. now i'll tell you where this name wanjiko comes from okay wanjiko wanjiko was my grandmother's mom okay njoki njoki was her daughter that got married to this family okay something happened to wanjiko this one she developed a mental issue very early on in life okay now this mental issue if you ask me today i'm very sure it wasn't just normal it wasn't just a genetic problem now my suspicions are this was not normal she was already married with her children okay but one day she was going to a party to help cook and she disappeared okay she disappeared never to be seen again let me do that okay but now this njoki once she gets married to njogona they bring back another wanjiko okay wanjiko this is her mother okay now these two these two no matter what wanjiko did okay they would understand each other she was always quiet my mother was always quiet yeah sometimes she did things that would annoy her mother and joki and her children wanjiko's children nduta let me now put there nduta because now this is where the problem is mostly whenever uh you know uh her children let's just put in nduta and joki okay Nduta and Joki were mostly under this woman's care, okay? So she's supposed to... Now, this this Njoki is her. She's named after my grandmother, okay? So there really shouldn't be any problem there, and there doesn't seem to be, except these two, uh, from what I could, didn't, uh, I could see, there was that, you know, um, there was that feeling of, oh, this one is named after me, so there's some favor there, yeah? until there wasn't and i could see like a lot of seriousness going on there you know like they didn't quite understand each other and they didn't quite uh tolerate each other okay and for the longest time because of that name they were at peace with each other until they weren't and i started being you know like um my grandmother's not favorite but she would come into my defense whenever there was pro problems and there were a lot of problems between me and my mother, okay? So the attacks I talked about, we would attack each other all the time, okay? So uh, at first, it was being a child, being indisciplined. She would address that with beating, just to correct behavior, it would seem, yeah? But it made me feel very unloved, okay? Later, as a teenager, she's watching me. She doesn't like what she's seeing. She will call it out, okay? Until I find a voice, okay? Now, uh, let's draw a microphone, okay? Yeah. My God, it will look bad. 
So I, until I find my voice and I'm calling these things out the way my son would call the things out. Now these things that I'm calling out, it's a spirit. I see the same spirit and it's only when my mom settles down and is not working as much. Yeah. So I see this uh, spirit. I don't like it. Okay. And of course she, she won't let me talk as a young person. Okay. But luckily I'm spending a lot of time with her mother. Okay. And so it's like she's soothing me. Uh, there's some respect, okay? Not total love and adoration. There's respect. Now, this respect would only uh, be described as the, as the respect you get between in-laws, okay? So there was some respect there. And I would see later as uh, I'm grown, if my mom attacks me, she would say, you know, uh, leave her alone. You know, you don't have to beat just this one, okay? To my mother, this Njoki was... Uh, a better child because she was respectful she was a perfect firstborn you know firstborns are so responsible they will make sure the house is clean take care of the child this crazy child who has to be told to shower and all of these things so uh for the longest time my mother does not know me okay because she's busy i'm either under my uh, grandmother's care or my sister's care okay so when she comes to actually see me um i have a mouth okay I'm rude and yet uh, she doesn't feel I'm justified because all this time she's working hard for us as a single mother okay so it's very painful to her whatever I say hits her different because she's like you actually are attending like a government school I have to work so hard to make sure your fees are paid and all of that so there comes a lot of pain yeah from Duta to Wanjiko okay I'm hurting her and we don't know why okay so uh, I continue with my life, do my own thing, <laughs> get uh, early pregnancy. I, I actually got a baby before Njoki. I'm embarrassing her. Everything I do uh, is so wrong, okay? And now when she complains to like a sister, she's being told, what is the big deal? You also gave, uh, you know, you also got your children while at home, okay? So it looks like a history repeating itself. All of these people do not know, okay, maybe these ones now know in the familiar, whatever they are, but from Joki downwards, nobody raises the point that this is the fourth generation, okay? It is just pain. It is just embarrassment. It is just, okay, you are bringing more kids. Now, the thing about uh, grandparents, they don't care if you bring any more kids. As long as you do the right thing, are you naming uh, the child since you're not married are you naming the child correctly because you can't name them outside unless they were you know unless you're married okay but since you birth the child here so you must name them you know the name so it was supposed to be her husband's name juguna okay wow you guys bear with me i know this is not very easy uh to understand okay so i was supposed to name my first child in juguna but because of marriage they had to do the honorable thing between the two families because there's that honor and respect among in-laws okay so by me marrying ameru okay meru yeah Okay, so we, we belong to a different family, but still, because it is the culture, my second child, uh, my second child, this one, will be named in my, in my tribe, okay? And we don't know it. We, all these times we are doing this naming, following culture, following traditions, we do not know what we are doing, but we are actually bringing back, the way we keep bringing back this name, this name has to go through the whatever the person went through okay so you see i do not just get anjuguna direct yeah i lose uh the first child while i'm married and so the second one comes in through difficulty and we name him that don't think anything about it we don't know that there was a, a spiritual struggle okay why don't we all know that there was a spiritual struggle because at this age at this age as a married couple, you know nothing. You may hear things, but you'll be fighting them in the physical. You will say, uh, it doesn't matter. Let's just move on. At least the child is healthy. We go to hospital. The child is healthy. There's no problem, okay? But this child continues to grow. And now, the, the he, oh, this child, yeah? Karega, this child. I don't believe I'm doing this. Let me make it pretty. 
ah you guys so this child keeps afflicting the mother okay and it's not as bad as it seems it's something you can live with so you never know what is really going on you're just like ah how can this boy really loves the father touches the father is all over the father he's a touchy touchy person yeah but he doesn't come near me and whenever he comes i'm like i'm not a touchy touchy person get away from me if you can't talk to me in my love language or how you know i want to be addressed forget it okay so he's like, of course, I forget it. And he goes, okay? So meet me at my level and I meet you at my level. We are both so stubborn to each other, okay? So we don't know these things, but I notice that whenever I pray for him, I see him calming down. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, it's a spiritual matter. So I keep praying, okay? And whatever happens with his life, whenever he comes around to talk to me, I find that I'm telling him, you know, sweet nothings. And apparently these sweet nothings works on this boy more than they work for any other person. So we do not know it, but this Njuguna is being soothed. This Njuguna is being soothed by Ndu the mother, Nduta, in the spirit, okay? So it's like, it's okay. I know, I know I let you go. I know you are lost out there all alone in pain and confusion but now you're back you know calm down i love you all of these things yeah you will not believe how this boy laps up s such things yeah all these others are men you know like okay he's also <laughs> a true man yeah just different okay so these ones don't care you know they don't even want to hear i love you they don't want hugs unless they have to be forced sometimes we have to wrestle them to the ground to get a hug okay this one he wants all those he wants hugs and stuff, okay? So whatever children you're getting are operating. There's a spirit of God over them, okay? So he makes all things all right because God is a God of legality. He will not do things, uh, you know, uh, to uh, and ignore someone in the lineage, ignore somebody who cried their tears at 16, four generations ago, or maybe 20. You know, maybe she lost her child at 25, okay? Uh, maybe later because uh, maybe she got him at 25, yeah? And there was that general relief, sigh of relief, the child made it, okay? Then later, maybe in her 40s, she loses this child and she's crying forever, crying, crying, all tears. And then this whole generation, now in Joroge with her sons, they go into detention once the state of emergency is declared in Kenya, okay? So 1952 uh, to 60, they're in detention, okay? Let's say 1954 because I think my mother was born. He uh, he he disappears. Njuguna disappears after my mother is born. So about an, an, uh, a year and a half or later, okay? So all these years she's crying and God soothes her over the generations, okay? But then you see there's fight and wrangles. In fact, not just Wanjiko and Duta in this home. Duta and Joki are forever fighting. Do you know why? We are not even people from the same home. We are in-laws. Okay, so this Njoki that came from that Wanjiko and this Wanjiko, we are not the same people. I mean, we are not from the same family. Okay, these, these two people are from the same family. Okay, and so they seem to understand each other, you know, and along the way, you've seen this in families, yeah? where we don't understand this person, she's always acting this way. When she's told to do something, she doesn't do. Oh, she's not even clean. She's not even this. She, you know, a lot of things, yeah? Perhaps once in a while, they'll be like, um, you know, because a sister is a sister, they'll be like uh, some sort of defense, like don't worry or leave her alone. But eventually it becomes, it, it, it looks like hate. You know, so so many wrangles in the family, but this child does not even belong here. This child is from another family, okay? And this is the what the de devil uses as a uh, legality to fight the scapegoat in the family, okay? So do you have a scapegoat in the family or are you the scapegoat in the family? All right, so everything you do will be attacked, okay? Everything and every... Ev Everything you are will be attacked, okay? No matter how well you do, whether you do well in school, it's not appreciated because there is, it's just spiritual, okay? We, are just, we just don't like you. Sometimes they'll seem that there is reasons, sometimes not, okay? 
So this child, this mother will want the best for this child because this child can stand on their own. They are not as troublesome. They maintain the house. They are a good, uh, you know, you know, firstborn. Okay, this one perhaps was even born just so that she doesn't have just one baby. Okay, so as I'm growing up, or as you are growing up as a scapegoat. You feel so broken, there's low self-esteem and all of this, and yet you're still, you're yet to meet the world that will keep rejecting you, and they're thinking, how is this child, how does it, how does she carry herself, okay? Now, I noticed I would cry a lot as a child, yeah, and I would be made fun of, yeah, like, uh, you're just a kiriri, why do you cry so much, what is wrong with you? Now, this thing happens uh, along the way. Let me get a brush. Okay, so the thing with the scapegoat child is that they always are trying to please. They do not know. And along the way, this model child will perhaps go away to school. Um, when my sister went away to school, that is when I learned cooking. And I only learned because I would spend a lot of time with my auntie, who I'm named after, okay? She loved me a lot, but she lived for a bit far away from home. She she would call me Tadu, you know, whenever I come, she's calling me Tadu. I would find a lot of love there. She's the one who showed me how to cook ugali and all of that, okay? So now Nduta, Nduta, this girl who is just a mess, makes, meets this guy. Funny thing, my, 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 my husband's name is the same as my father's name. My father was also called Peter, okay? So she meets this guy and they make a baby, okay? So more mess at home. But this whole family, uh, let's call them Njoki's family, is tolerant, very tolerant of this guy because one, he is very nice, okay? And the families are friends, okay? Like friends of grandma, not my, my mom, okay? So my mom bears a lot of embarrassment that she can't speak about because uh, the connection comes from grandma, okay? So the mom, mom and grandma are friends, okay? So this, there cannot be a fight, but any effort to make peace will be appreciated. But now this guy is so nice. And he's a friend. He becomes a friend to my mom. Even before, they used to talk very well about salvation. You know, both were saved, okay? So me, I, I never care. I'll go away from home. You know, uh, when I come back, he's at home talking to grandma or mom. He won himself a good name, okay? But eventually, how is it possible that this nice guy uh, got a baby with our daughter? So... She's the problem. She made him backslide, okay? So, yeah, I'm the scapegoat even in this case, okay? So, mom really loves this guy. Always have, okay? Supports him and everything, yeah? But now uh, I'm making these mistakes, yeah? This guy could have gotten any girl, okay? So, like I said, it starts from home. All these uh, problems, all these self-esteem issues come from home, okay? And I'll tell you one more thing, yeah? But this... I don't want you to think that this is uh, a victim mentality, but this is like every problem that you're going through has a, an explanation, okay? So anyway, eventually uh, we live together with this guy to a point the whole family now is in it. After all, they've been meeting, doing customary uh, negotiations and all of that, okay? So there's an aunt of mine, and even when we went back, she would say things to me like, wah! You mean even with this body of yours, you got a, <laughs> a husband? Last time she said, uh, I don't remember that you were this, you know, like your body was like this. My body is top heavy, okay? So <laughs> now it would look like I have issues with it, but no, I have grown and known God to be my comforter and I knew, I know the reason why. And so I realized, okay, she is trying to calculate how how did you even stay married with this kind of you don't look really nice my dear you know and everybody gets so offended except me and i tell her i tell her but i'm made like your mother okay so me me and my shosho 
me and this Njoki senior, we really look alike from color and all of that, yeah? Had pretty faces as younger people, but later, okay, as you grow older, the top heavy body really is accentuated, yeah? So I'm seeing these things that I was, uh, you know, the counterfeits would attack me with. These things came from home, okay? So let me tell you, the devil has nothing new. When uh, your people go to covens and all of that, it's everything that they've ever thought, yeah? Like this girl, she's so young, she's not even pretty like the others, she's not this and that. She's not as hardworking, you know. The the witch will put all that in consideration, okay? So they will when these people come to attack you, they will say the very same things that were said in the coven. So these things have been said over and over again. So let's say this is the scapegoat. Oh my god. I'm terrible at this. Can you believe I used to be in an art class? My face is a, like that a bit with cheeks, eh? So Ah, pretty. Okay. So, as a scapegoat, the words that have always, the arrows that were always thrown at me were, I used to be so pretty. So, they could never, you know, say anything about my face. But they would say a lot of things about my cheeks, okay? So big cheeks and all of that, yeah? It doesn't seem to matter. It's all good and dandy until the witches start to use these things against you. Okay, so it would be body shaming, yeah? Body shaming. And I'm telling you, for the life of these people, all of these people, they cannot understand. And it will come from your mother sometimes. They cannot understand. Why would somebody who looks like you get a good man, okay? Or you can get a man... But why a good man? You can get a man and bring chicks to kids to this home. But why a good man? Okay. And so you find along the way, as you're attacking your parents, they no longer have love for you because when you're attacked, when you're under witchcraft influence, it's everybody for themselves, God for us all. Why is that so? People feel so afflicted. So whatever this child is saying to the mother, Whatever this child is saying to the mother, okay, is an attack and it's a loud attack. It affects their nerves. It affects everything that is them, okay? So they're like, you're not even that nice. You're not even pretty, you know? Why are you attacking me because you think you're better than me, you know? So there's so much separation between this mother who is actually a chosen one that brought this scapegoat forth that is supposed to help with these family altars. There's so much division, okay? It doesn't seem so because I'm always running to mom looking for comfort. You know, I'm there. I'm trying to help, you know, uh, the same. Yeah. When she's down, she wants to call me. We talk for long hours. It doesn't seem like there's a problem. Now, when we attack each other, it's like two bulls. Okay. It's like two bulls. The grass will never grow. Okay. So mom looking at this guy, he's very nice. Okay. So she will say it with her mouth. This guy could have done better. You understand? Okay, I don't know if you guys, okay, I know for sure that you've gone through this because th these are the kind of pains God wants to heal, okay? So this mom, uh, throughout the ages, will keep saying that. You go, you come back, she will say things like, ah, but this guy looks nice. It's true, he looks nice, okay? But she will keep saying those things and they will keep now raising this childhood wound, okay? So it's like opening the wound all over again. Like, oh, mom, you think this guy should marry somebody else? So what happens to the whole generation? Because should this guy marry somebody else, you miss out on your grandkids. Don't you care? There should be so much care in your genealogy. It shouldn't matter how people look like. Because this body, this body, the body, however it looks like, is just a vessel, okay? So this vessel that is carrying your spirit, your soul... And the body that you should take care of, no matter how it looks like, you know, this body is just a vessel, but this vessel can be hidden in plain sight. So it may not be pleasing to people's eyes, but like I've said, God works in weakness. So it's when people see you, they do not think you can do anything, okay? So this is the power you have as a scapegoat child. There's something 
people are saying and doing against you mostly it's the words because words have power the bible says the tongue holds the power of death or life okay those who love it will eat of the fruit therefore okay so by your words you will have to eat your words uh, at some point okay so with your words you can bless or you can curse okay i don't think i've got, done a good job but if you guys see this and are able to understand you know throw a lot of you know praise there and say oh my god that was a good job uh, and then subscribe because with every subscription it's an arrow against these evil altars okay so good job or not so here we are so this body shaming is not new and that is why it is so loud okay it started from the covens but when the witches were working in the covens okay the witches in the covens what they do in secret what they do in the secret covens god does god reveals in dreams okay honestly i'm coming from your future to tell you get a big notebook travel with it wherever you go write your dreams okay i wish my dreams were in in one place and i could understand when i tell you that i did not know this ministry would ever come to play uh, will ever happen and yet there's a dream there showing although i could not understand it until it's time okay so the vision so you understand what they do in the covens will be revealed in the dreams okay so this they cannot substantiate you can even defend them and say i don't think me i don't believe in witchcraft okay until god reveals and you're like okay he's like now what okay so you discover these things in the dream and you know okay what they said okay what their contention was because when my family wanted somebody else introduced to knock off to sort of knock off my husband out of the way uh that is what was used she has to be pretty she has to be better looking than you know our daughter so that he he goes away okay but what they were coming into agreement with are the anti marriage marriage altars because when you're afflicted now you see the battle between me and my mom when you're afflicted you just want peace you know you just you don't want to see anybody else succeeding she will help us how okay so uh, the whole time it's anti marriage altars okay now what the witches will not tell you is that as you approach this altar to come against nduta yes from what you can see nduta does not even deserve a good marriage okay she's not pretty she doesn't talk well she doesn't uh you know uh at first there used to be nice things said like uh this guy can survive alone peter can survive alone because he's learned a lot of cooking that is all people have ever praised me for okay now peter right now doesn't even eat regular food so no amount of cooking like you can't shake him with cooking okay so no amount of cooking in fact he stays uh, at a you know like there's only so much he can eat so this guy now is able to really hear god okay sometimes sometimes because when you're afflicted or when you're when they charm you okay you once you're charmed you're always charmed okay so sometimes there can be numbing happening around him yeah so he doesn't sense what is happening especially because he's a people lover okay now nduta who was always a scapegoat will be a scapegoat in the family okay in church and among people okay society society okay now what they don't know when they're rejecting you is that they make you they're training you okay you become such a good soldier you do not care about acceptance okay it is beautiful to have good friends once in a while you'll be able you'll even mistake some for good friends but now god will give you a sign okay and show you these are not your people this nuta has no problem cutting them off okay and now this peter through experience whenever it comes to this what will what will happen it doesn't just happen whenever somebody you know evil will come around us before they happen before they come around us i will have been sent to a fast okay so it will be easy to know 
and now now many years ago it never used to happen but now that we are very neat together uh, a cord of three strands okay so God in the middle doing this thing knitting us together okay yeah proper knitting has been happening in the last seven years proper knitting okay now the kind of marriage I know now is not the kind of marriage I knew before okay it's not uh, finicky it's not okay yeah I'll, I'll stop there but yeah God now does the knitting it was originally done and sometimes due to weather and storms it gets frayed okay but God is able he's the one who does all these impossibilities okay there's nothing he cannot do okay so he's able to do the knitting again okay so when he knits both this one Peter and Duta get something called experience okay and now you're ushered into the spiritual age okay where you do not just observe things spiritual age now at this age you do not just observe things with your eyes you observe you you know from the spirit okay so uh our kids our kids will be m t t okay when these children even bring women home to marry okay we know who belongs and who doesn't and they may not look like anything uh, you know, you can tell. Now, because we're in this generation, God has shown us what it is like to be in the blessing. You remember when Abraham told his servant, make sure you go back to my homeland and you will notice, you will see this girl, yeah? And so God showed this servant the kind of girl Rebecca would be, what he would, she would do, so that this servant knows this girl, yeah? And bring her back, okay? And this girl, when she was brought, she was so beautiful, to Isaac okay so we would see a repeat of what uh, Sarah and Abraham would go through whenever they went somewhere seducers would come by okay I don't know if you can see this high yeah there were kings wanting her Abimelech uh, Pharaoh okay I, I, I don't know if you can see everything from what I'm saying, but this is the spiritual age where you reach and you're able to tell uh, as you're leaving, okay, as you're departing earth, you're able to tell, uh, you know, to talk to people, make sure, and that is the spiritual age my father-in-law reached, okay, he was in that age where he is like, okay, you cannot marry a Gikuyu, but then when a Gikuyu comes into the picture, um, I can tell you that he had to check, okay, he had to check now th there's this girl agikuyu which is forbidden coming into the family and even the examples around every man who had married into the agikuyu was not doing well okay and the meru are uh, a tight-knit society okay so they will warn their children okay agikuyu we don't warn our children as much they will warn their children do not marry into this family it is not acceptable okay now he goes to check and before he gives his consent he has seen something okay i i will not tell you what he saw but he he was uh shown that this girl will come with her blessing okay so um one thing i have wanted to say because this is for everybody okay but you will understand anyone watching me from whichever tribe from whichever people you will understand because this thing exists in every um uh, in every people okay in every group group of people you will understand when i say this okay just uh, i'm saying this about the gikuyu but you identify yourself from wherever you are okay i have watchers from zimbabwe and we, we were actually exploring with one of the uh, viewers uh, about their people okay i was asking her because i know uh, there's a levite tribe in zimbabwe yeah so i was asking her about it so about the Gikuyu, okay, these people carry a blessing, okay, with them. And that is why a Gikuyu will never make a good wife at first. Unless you know what you're dealing with, this woman will not make a good wife because she's about getting her blessing. She is chasing her blessing until it comes, until it comes, until she knows what her purpose is because she carries it from inside. She will fret. She will never sit home pretty, okay? and be a nice wife until she gets into her blessing and her purpose in this home she will keep running okay 
Now, if th if this girl is married into your family, she will look crazy. The altars in your family will, you know, act up. Okay. Now you will see in the girl's family will act up. Okay. Because where are you taking this blessing? Okay. Is it a place we approve? Now, when she goes to this other family, she may even find acceptance because they recognize the blessing she comes with, okay? But still, it's a process, yeah? Until this Gikui woman reaches her blessing, and I know it's a lot of women who are like this, and, uh, you know, people don't understand you. You're chasing whatever uh, you, you will find. You're chasing uh, trade. You're chasing school and all of that. You will not sit with your children and be a mom until you understand who you are now along the way because we've come into the age of blessings there are people there are women who have realized that they actually are good mothers they love it and as they take care of their children they are able to make income while they take care of their children at home okay so they will do what they have to do and nobody understands the beauty of this woman the, her, her, her as a marriage partner I've heard Luo's now praising the Gikuyo yeah the Luo men okay the men the nilotic men praising this Gikuyo wife okay lately okay so because we have been pressed under we had been put to sleep as a people okay and by sleep I mean we were not functioning in our power nobody would recognize the power of these people and their goodness okay and the fact that they've really paid and the fact that they lost their fathers okay now nobody tells you in the last ages in the last four, four generations we've not been talking about the importance of fathers even i did not know the importance of fathers until we come to this home and i see now whenever i'm attacking my children or fighting with them my husband will draw me to the side and uh, and help me understand teach me about teenagers teenage men my teenage men in the in my family were my cousins we fought we roll on the ground okay they're children we don't uh you know we don't just have peace okay we fight amani haiji ila kwancha upanga we fight okay my cousins, they are protectors and all of that. But closely, I did have brothers or a father, so I do not know. And until I'm submissive enough to listen to this uh, father, you know, their father explaining to me about his feelings as a teenager. Not some, you know, new age wisdom. His feelings, how he felt, you know, growing up with a mother, you know, who was, you know, a matriarch very much in command. I did not think it could affect him in any way, but now he expresses his son's feelings, okay? And it's not only that. These fathers are so important in the children's lives, good or bad, but it's just a man seeing himself against another man who he came from and learning, oh, this is how you deal with a beard. This is how you deal with this. This is how to be a man that you don't even have to make noise for people to listen. Oh, daddy is home, okay? So we'll wrestle, we'll fight, we'll cut grass, we'll do manly things, okay? As opposed to what they would do with mom. Mom seems to be emasculating because she's like, can you wash the dishes? Can you do this, okay? Can you, uh, is the di unless the dishwasher is unloaded, unless this house is clean, all these things are removed, I'm not hearing you. So this young man cannot express himself to his mother because you you want to establish control of this house because otherwise that is your way of trying to save your home, yeah? All the time making noise, all the time. It's hellish to be with you, but you don't know. You think you're establishing some kind of control, okay? Now with all the with, with in the past four generations, yeah, a lot of mothers were the ones controlling homes ever since we lost our fathers during colonialism, during my Mao uh, wars, World War, World War II. I don't know about other countries, but I know about the Kenyan, Kenyan central, central parts of the country. Yeah? All over Kenya, this thing happened, but the central part, we lost our men, a lot of our men. Okay, Now, Coming over to Canada, I would realize that when the uh, when the fathers of the boomers went to war, the mothers would go through the same thing. So there was so much emasculation of the young man, and then there was, uh, you know, uh, 
yeah, okay let me not get into that but this men who come from these mothers okay plus their wives who had come into empowerment being under their mother's control okay so they could see a, a woman can do what a man can do all of that they were so they were so masculine in their energy so whenever they married they will if they don't agree with the man it is quick divorce please we are not uh, negotiating you're gone they try again example when i went to the i meet uh this uh family let's let's call him mo and sonia okay and i'm like why is this woman suffering so much why can i see that this man is good he's trying he's tried and given up okay now when i look at sonia i don't see a white entitled woman she's very weak in her position crying hoping that she's going to find a savior this man does not understand because all i'm giving is love she won't take it what's the problem with this woman but whenever they're together whenever they're in agreement they're the sweetest okay to each other they're the sweetest okay but whenever now they are threatened with outside forces or something now it is either them against the outside force or either of them reporting to the outside force you understand so world war ii world war ii affected the families as we know and everything from these systems from these political uh, systems will affect the home the men will have to go fight the wars the women will be left uh, at the at the helm and let me tell you no mother can carry a baby and still carry a home it is very difficult now god wants to change all of this okay god wants to set you free that is why your churches won't work that is why nothing will work because the women had to be so strong along the way okay so what is God's intent for men and women at home and in churches? Okay? Now, let's say this is a man and a woman in church, okay? Perhaps the man has the calling, okay? In church, he's the head of the church, okay? You will always see a power struggle in a church that is not uh, well balanced, okay? The woman now sees this as the chance to shine, okay? She wants to also be the leader because she knows this man from the point of home where he's not all of that, okay? As he stands before in the pulpit, he is a strong man, okay? But is he really the woman, his wife and his mother know him in a way that the congregation doesn't, okay? Now, this is a curse. This is a confusion from the curse. This is an altar confusion this the devil will play here yeah the, this is devil's playground as long as there is uh this um i will edit and put the scripture but it's in genesis i think 13 where where adam and eve sinned and god said you will struggle to control each other okay so when this thing is in church that's that that is going down okay no no orphan no widow nobody will ever find salvation in this place because there's power struggle and this man knows that this woman knows uh knows him he needs his woman in order to leave this church the woman won't let him okay she needs a ministry she needs something out of this yeah so unless she's submitted and that is why there's so much attraction in a woman who says no i don't want to be your mother to me <laughs> i don't want to be your mom in this ministry i don't want to i just want to be there for my husband okay you may not understand the congregation will beat this woman who wants to rest I, i'm really drawing my arrows badly so the congregation will be attacking this woman who wants to rest she wants her rest she wants to just support her husband that was the agreement in the bedroom okay I just want to support my husband because I understand what goes into this, okay? So she's being a spiritual woman. She's holding him from behind as he battles because the church is the world. And now it is against this one man. You're coming with all your altars, okay, from your homes, all your brokenness. This guy is running this hospital. The church is a hospital, okay? He's running this hospital by himself. All your altars, all your seductions, you know, you, some have seduction powers, okay, from the covens. You're bringing to all these altars, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's, uh, 
there's seduction there is uh these people who have kisirani you know who will just attack out of nowhere uh, all of those things that you can think of you know fight and wrangles among the people you are coming all of you all of you all of you all of you these are people all of you are coming with all your, all your wrangles from your homes and altars and you're broken and you're crying and you have mommy issues and daddy issues and sibling issues and scapegoat issues and you're coming to bring to this one man in the church, okay? And now if this woman stands in your way, you cannot stand her, okay? This woman being a spiritual woman may even uh, spot some people uh, who are not right for this place, okay? What she's supposed to do is reject at once and send you on your merry way. There should be no games there. And if she says a thing, it should go because she is the backing, spiritual backing behind this man, okay? A lot of people will not uh, accept that. A lot of uh, men, as the leaders in the church, spiritual leaders, will not accept for this woman to step in between the, pe her, the, the man and the people who are coming. Or to say anything because they, he loses the members, okay? And the members are subscribers. They're the ones who validate, okay? Who show that he's going anywhere. But now, this whole thing will never work. This whole thing will never work until they deal with the altars, okay? Until they deal with each other, okay? Until they find healing in each other, which does not uh, include escape through divorce and all of that because you guys are chosen these two people are chosen okay you will now be attacking the ship that comes to you for salvation because you think these are the problem okay and yet this is the ministry that you're called to do you understand so there should not be war in churches there should not be war in the homes had the homes been healed we would not need this particular uh, establishment to save us okay so what happens now in the new age uh, where unless a church has worked out all these issues they cannot lead where are people going to go okay now do you see why we have social media do you see why anything that comes up and you call it demonic God will use it because he is the power. He will use it. He, he will use it to teach. Okay, what cannot be taught in the churches, okay? So he will use social media. Uh, he will use to teach the good and the people of God, the children of God know his voice, okay? So they will veer towards the people uh God is calling you too so you can hear and learn all your problems, all your issues, so that the next age that we enter to, the blessing age, yeah, people will not have as much issues. They are edified, okay? Now this social media has a lot going on. The witches have their own platforms, okay? Uh, the people of God, uh, let's say the prophets, have, uh, you know, their platforms. So the apostles, okay, all the five offices, Apostles. What are the five offices? I don't even know. <laughs> okay. So the five offices are in the social media. You can attend that and uh, uh, go. So a lot of people will say, oh, and who will bury me? Oh, I can't be, you know. Uh, God will take you to the place, to the right place, once you've dealt with all your altar issues. That's where I'm going to stop. If you have questions on this, please uh, ask. I'm going to be expounding it more. But this is what just flowed for now, okay? Thank you. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.